So example one is it's with a converging lens. And the object distance is greater than the focal length. So here's the lens. If uh, this is the focal length, then the object is placed somewhere out here, for example. Um, and um, you guys saw the example two and three, so we'll get to those. But let me just go through each example one at a time. So um, when you have a question like this, technically you can do it without drawing any diagrams. It's a sort of, I don't know, trusting, um, trusting this equation. So you could do this question. Um, by, all right, you have object distance. This is object distance here. Let me um, get some numbers to plug in so that I have something concrete. I guess, let's say that the focal length is 10 centimeters and object distance, does it look like 15 centimeters maybe? Yes, I want to be close. It doesn't have to be exact, but I just want to be close. 15 centimeters. So the question would be, the, I, we think, or I think the image is going to form somewhere here. There will be image here. So the question is, all right, how far is the image distance? Okay. And if you trust this equation, then this is actually a pretty easy question to answer. You have one equation, one unknown. So you go through algebra and solve it. Let me do that quickly. So I have, uh, where do I want? To, let me do the algebra here. Wait, do I want, uh, let me do the algebra here. So this is my lens equation. One over do plus one over di is equal to one over f. I want to solve for di, so move this over. So I get one over di is equal to one over F minus one over DO. I want to take the reciprocal. So I guess I should combine this fraction here. This is equal to, um, so the common denominator, common denominator F times DO, F times DO. And so DO times one, DO minus F times one, F. That's the combined fraction. Now take the reciprocal, that will give you the image distance. So the image distance, di, is equal to f times do over do minus f. You will do this algebra so many times as you're going through that homework set, maybe about a dozen times or so, um, which is good. Uh, I mean, algebra, I feel like there's there's always something to gain from algebra practice. Um, let me plug in the numbers. I'm going to skip the units because they will simply cancel out. The centimeters will cancel out. So I'll say 10 times 15. Oh wait, um, well, one factor of centimeters will cancel out and I'll be left with the one remaining factor of centimeters. Divided by uh, 15 minus um, 10 centimeters. So it's 150 divided by five, Ooh. 30 centimeters. Um, all right, so that's uh, my answer for the image distance. So apparently, if I draw this correctly, my image is supposed to be at somewhere here. So this is how far away my image will be, <laughs> di equal to 30 centimeters. And you know that's okay as far as finding how far away the image will be. And if you are trying to do the demos that I showed you last time, where I was trying to form a focused image of the filament on the whiteboard, that's kind of all you need. But there's really there's one thing that's lacking here, and that lacking thing is 
Suppose someone asks you this question. The image that's going to form somewhere here, is it going to be an upright image or inverted image? Some of you know from your reading it's inverted. How do you know it's inverted? Hmm? Uh, you are bringing in a formula that I have not yet introduced. So Dilang is trying to tell me that linear magnification m is given by minus di over do. And since this is negative, um, that, but we are going to get to this. <laughs> so suppose you didn't know this formula yet because we haven't talked about it yet. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go into ray tracing. Because if you're trying to, based on this thin lens equation, try to figure out all the details about this image, there are some things that you are not going to be able to figure out. So the thin lens equation, it gives you the distance. That's what it's in terms of, that's what it gives. But everything else, it really only comes from drawing the diagram. So this is why I'm, even though I know where the image will be, kind of, I'm going to do my, ray tra the, do my ray tracing to locate the image still. So let me draw my two principal rays. As a reminder, um, so I, I guess you can define three principal rays, but I, um, I usually draw only two because I'm afraid the third one won't come out right. <laughs> so I'll only draw two. So the first ray comes in parallel. And how does it go out? So it, first ray, it comes in parallel to the axis. And how does it go out after going through the lens? Yeah, it goes through the focal point and goes through focal point. Um, so let me draw that. Trying to draw this as accurately as possible. Uh, all right, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, second is it goes, uh, goes through middle of lens. And as, as it goes through the middle of the lens, do people remember how it goes? goes through the middle, let's say straight. It doesn't bend. So, let's see. Somewhere here. I don't know, good enough. <laughs> so if you did it with a, a straight edge and did it very, with a perfect precision, then you should end up somewhere here. And what that point, what that intersection, that point tells you is that this point, the light rays from this point they all come together to a focus here. So when you are looking at these light rays from here, these light rays will look like they are coming from this point. So you will see a sharp real image at this point. So let me sketch out the rest of the image here. So what the rest of the image will look like is um, this tip of the arrow and the rest of the arrow. So this is what the image looks like. And that's why it's inverted. 